You know, last night I saw something on DeviantArt, not DeviantArt, but on on YouTube that made me realize that this is what needs to be done to get people to realize that there is still a market out there for these characters and there is still a market out there for some kind of animated show or even movie based around these characters. And I also think it's a great way to petition to get the live action CGI movie to feature these characters. There's one person, you see, this is a person that has a YouTube channel called Doodly Studios. Doodle, Doodly Studios. And obviously he's good friends with Laura Blue. And just like Laura Blue and her friends over at Season, which is uh, sonicsatam.com, he is doing something that is trying to get these characters noticed again, trying to get attention back on these characters and what they mean to the franchise. You see, it's things called Sonic the Freedom Fighter or Sonic Freedom Fighter or something like that. And basically, he did a sneak peek of a CGI animated adaption of the very first issue of the Sonic the Hedgehog comic book. Not the miniseries, but an official, but the first official issue of the comic book. And you had him providing the voice of, of of Sonic, and you had Laura Blue providing the voice of Sally, and I think it was like A-Log or something like that, providing the screaming voice of Antoine. So, to me, I looked at the CGI on this, and just for an early first sneak peek, I thought it was pretty good. Now, some might say, well, it looks like the typical kind of CGI we've seen before with those um, um, ripped off, uh, rip off movie titles from that one video place that Bob, that Bob Shuex talks about. And it does look like that at times. And some might even say it looks kind of like the CGI we've seen in Rudolph the Red-Nosed Rain, Reindeer in the Island of Misfit Toys. And that's true, too. But with today's technology and the software that is sold today in stores and online, you can't really blame people for taking advantage of that because they feel that this is the only way you're going to get the attention of Sega and a lot of groups out and a lot of other people out there and make them realize there is a market steal for these characters outside of the comic books and you know, outside of the games. I mean, true, we're getting Sonic Boom in the next month or so on Cartoon Network, and that's okay, that's fine, it looks pretty good. But they look at that, and they realize, you know what, if Sonic Boom could be coming out, and, you know, and even before that, years ago, if Sonic X and anime had come out, and then also you have this 11-minute short called Night of the Werehog that came out, you know, they look at that and they say, you know what, we can do the same, and we could probably do it just as good, if not better. They realize that this will get the attention of Sega. This will get the attention of Archie Comics. This will get the attention of those out there, the, of those out there, whether it's movie studios, animation studios, whatever. And they believe that by getting the, by doing this in, by doing this, it will get that those studios' attentions. It'll get Sega's attention. It'll get Archie Comics' attention, and they'll be like, you know, and they'll be like, hey, you know what? There is still a market for Sonic and these characters. Let's do something about it. I mean, think about it. Nintendo owns. Well, Nintendo doesn't own Sega, but they have a majority stake in Sega. They have a partnership right now with that company. And you don't think Nintendo's not going to notice that either? Of course they are. And they're going to be like, you know what, there's a, there's a market for that, let's try it. Now some of you might say, well that's just, you know, a dream, you know, a dreamer's dream. Well, you know what, a dreamer's dream is about to come true. Because cause let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Over the past year, year and a half, what have we gotten that's been Sonic related, that's, you know, 
been that's not been a game or not been part of the comic books or been loosely based on the game or on the comic book or has had some kind of references. I'll tell you what we've gotten. We got the Sonic fan film last year by Blue Core Studios. We recently got Sonic Prologue. And even doing all this, we have over at SonicSatAM.com, we have the Season 3, Season, with the 3 in the middle of the word Season. We have Season being, de- Season 3, or Season as it's called, being developed as a webcomic series. And as we have seen hints and hints of, and you go to Tails' channel about this, you go to Laura Blue's YouTube channel about this, and you will see hints, sneak peeks, eeks, and all that of what they're trying to turn into an animated show, even even if it's a web show, and that is season. They're trying to take the season that they've got as a web comic, and they're trying to make it into an animated show. And I have seen animation tidbits of what they plan to do. You have Laura Blue doing a little voice part of Sally saying hi there. And it's an animated Sally that's saying it with her voice. You know, you got that. And now you got Sonic the Freedom Fighter, which is basically, according to Dooley Studios, is basically going to be an adaption, a CGI adaption of the Archie comic stories. You know, so to me... These fans, these Sonic fans like myself, even though I'm not in that category of being able to do all that stuff, these fans know what it's going to take to get the Freedom Fighters, to get the Sad AM, the Archie Comics portion of this franchise noticed, taken seriously again. And to me, I think it's also their way of saying, Sony, you want something to adapt for that Sonic live-action movie? Sonic live-action CGI movie, here you go. Use these stories from the comics. Use these stories from Saturday AM. Use these characters from the Saturday morning cartoon and the Archie comics. Use them, and you will get a good movie. And you know them, and they'll probably, and you know what? In response to Sonic Boom coming out, I'm not going to be surprised if this gets the attention of Cartoon Network. And Cartoon Network says, you know what? They want Sonic Boom out. They like, or, you know, Cartoon Network's going to probably notice how popular Sonic Boom's going to get. And they're going to say, you know what? These fans want these other versions of Sonic out. Let's put Sonic X on Cartoon Network. Let's put Adventures on Cartoon Network. Let's put Sat AM on Cartoon Network and see what gets us. Or well, you're going to have company networks like The Hub doing it. Just out of response to the fact that Sonic Boom and Sonic Cartoon is on Cartoon Network. You're going to have them doing it. Might even have Nickelodeon try it. I'm just saying. But the point is, you have a Sonic fandom out there right now that's going to all these links to try to get these characters, this portion of the franchise, noticed once more. Trying to get this portion of the franchise back on the screen once more. Whether it's the television screen, the internet web screen, or the big screen, whatever, they're trying to get this no they're trying to get this portion of the franchise noticed. And you know what? I applaud them for that and I respect them for that. And as far as from what I have seen, from what the season staff has shown off at various Comic Cons or conventions they've gone to, from what Doodly Studios has shown us as a sneak peek, from what this one uh, person I can think of the uh, YouTube page right now has done with Sonic Prologue, it just shows you, and then of course Blue Core Studios, it just shows you the dedication fans have, this fan base has, and that they are willing to do whatever it takes to get this portion of the franchise, the Sat AM, Archie Comics portion of the franchise, noticed, you know, back on notice again, and get, you know, basically put all the studios out there on notice again that, hey, you need to check this portion out because, yes, some of the games are good, but this makes it what it is. This is what drives the train. This is what fuels the engine of that train in that plane and gets it going to its destination. That's the truth. So to me, to me, 
I applaud the fan base for this. And I know that part of this is to directly tell Sony, if you're going to do a live action CGI adaption of Sonic, go in this direction. Use these stories from the comic. Use these characters from the comic and the cartoon show. And we guarantee you'll have a successful movie. So, that's all I'm